I have tremendous memories of my childhood. I, I left to Waterford uh, in about 1947, 48, when I, went, when I first started to go into the entertainment business. I left Waterford then and sort of went on the road. Musical family? Yes, a, a family that made a lot of music kind of, it, you know, just for fun at home, because there was no television in those days. So two of my brothers, and strangely enough, an uncle of mine who lived around the corner, they all played, of all things now, they played mandolins. Mm. And we had a little mandolin ensemble, even in those at that time, which was wonderful. We used to get arrangements for three mandolins and play them. And I, at that early age, I learned to sort of understand music anyway. So I became quite a nice little mandolin player <laughs> when I was a kid. And we used to do these things and loved every minute of it. And when you think of what kids do to these days, you know, going off to plays, we used to just meet at night and... and, and whoever's house we were at would they'd make some tea and cakes or something and we just sit and play the mandolins all very in, all very innocent lovely mm. now i mentioned um, you know working in a factory one of uh, a number of jobs you had because you left school at an early age following uh, <coughs> your father's My death, father's death yeah. but um your first band i think was still as a teenager you were a drummer weren't you i was yeah and a dreadful one as well <laughs> i tell you I, I really was a friend of mine that i used to sort of make music with at, at those days he was a piano player and and guitarist and and uh, I got together with him and we used to have you know little ensembles that we used to play and we started to do dances and things like that and I would play the guitar in the group and then get up and do some vocals and so on and you know it, it went from there you know that just just learning to to make make your own music as it were from the word go I was setting myself up Martin for the job that was to come later on when I got my own radio program on the BBC in the late 50s, early 60s, I found I was able to do the arrangements for the musicians. And, and, and then, of course, when my television shows came along later, I was able to write duets for, for people like Howard Keeler, Johnny Matheson, those people who used to come and do the show. And I never realized how privileged I was until you get into the environment of working with those people and find that they don't understand music at all, even though they're very successful singers. They don't know anything about music, most of them, mm. you see. And I said, what a great sort of shop floor thing I had. When Val Parnell died, I was out of the country, I think, somewhere, but I had some flowers, uh, uh, you know, sent to his funeral. And the note that I put on it was, believe me now, was really heartfelt because I said, dear Mr. Parnell, rest well. You will never know what you've done for me. Mm. And that is so true. That man changed my life completely in one night by putting me on Sunday night at the London Palladium. I did eight minutes on that show. And up to then, I couldn't get a record contract. I'd, I'd done a few little tiny bits here and there of, of television and radio and everything. And I'd done years and years of radio, Martin, with the... With the with the, with the Ramblers, with the yeah. quartet. But when I went on my own, of course, they said, well, who was he? You know, and you went in and I did auditions at the BBC and got a few little broadcasts and everything. And I taped the broadcasts and then took them around the record companies and they didn't want to know. I mean, they, they weren't interested at all. But when I did Sunday Night at the London Palladium, I went on and did that eight minutes on the show. And you see, once they saw me performing on television, being commercial people, the record company didn't think, oh, suddenly, I, I think he's a very nice singer. They didn't think that. They just said, I think this guy is going to be very popular. And that's when they gave me a contract. That was an understatement, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. To be very popular. 24 years or so on television, countless hit records and that's so right. on. Could you ever yeah. have dreamed you'd no. have so much success? No, I couldn't. I think I've sold about 11 million records. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. And I think the thing that made me successful, Martin, I think, was the popularity of the television show the whole atmosphere of it and everything mm. then and it was just a relationship with all my guests and the kind of personality of it all coming over and that's a side that the personality thing the thing that makes people like you now that's an elusive thing i don't think you can learn it i don't think you can practice the more you practice to try and make it work the more insincere you look mm. you know it's got to be a natural thing and if it's happened to me the day after the palladium martin very strange. The next morning in the national papers, I got fantastic write-ups. Now, I'd never had write-ups in my life like that. And there they all were, saying, where does this guy come from? He's great, you know, and mm -hmm. so on and so on. And we were looking at him. My wife and I were looking at them. And two of the papers said, this man comes over well, very well. He's got great natural charm. 
Scott says. And I, and I said to my wife across the table, I said, here, I said, what's this natural charm that I've got? And you know what she said? I think she said it's not knowing what natural charm is. 